why don't they just rent? So we passed a law in Massachusetts that says that the banks can no longer evict people that were tenants in a foreclosed building. That if once the bank foreclose, forecloses, they can't evict you if you were a tenant unless they have cause. Such a simple thing, right? So, so modest. You can't evict somebody unless you have a reason. But that wasn't true. And it's not true in most states. If you can get a law that just simply says for either a tenant or a former homeowner uh, that a bank has to have a reason to evict you after foreclosure, it's a huge, it's a very saleable idea. idea. And in Massachusetts, it passed unanimously in the, in the state but, legislature. But, but to show you how evil those people are, in Massachusetts, that law exists, but most people don't know about it. So Lynn United for Change constantly advises the tenants not to move, but the banks, they are so evil. They come there, they knock like they're the police, and say, we'll give you 2000 to move. Right. And of course, the people are scared to death, and they grab it and they leave. Right. So now it's vacant. And I just want to add one other thing. Most of the homes that are being paid for to the banks are underwater. And we should all try to help those who are too ashamed to stop paying the banks so that those banks can restructure those loans. They don't need to finance those houses that way because they're paying far beyond what that value of that home is. When you have an underwater home, what does that mean? But, but just the idea, just think about just think about it. If that's supposed to be your security and you're paying it down, you put 5% or 10% or even if you didn't put any percent, you're paying for a house who, as you pay, you're accruing value. You never get there if you have $100,000 above what it all what is owned. So you're giving them money for nothing. It's going to be Washington State now has a mediation clause for a bill that went through And they say something about showing goodwill. It's not a show goodwill. But let me ask you this question. But let me ask you this question. A lot of people bought homes lured by these bad types of loans. Yes. And here they were with a teaser, oh, you just only pay as much as your rent. And they did for a year or two. And then all of a sudden, it, boom, they can't afford it. They're willing to pay the amount that they started with, but they can't anymore. And so they're put in a bad place. And they feel ashamed that they can't make the payments. And you know, they try and struggle because they love the place. A lot of people that I know personally, Lynn, invested a great deal in their homes to try and make them nice. And now they want to be thrown out. And I tell them when I speak to them, do not leave. They don't own it. And unless they show you the paper of who owns it, don't go. And wait, sit it out. We're going to support you because the only way you're going to be able to succeed against them is if we all together on it. And that's what we have done. We've succeeded many times. We're going to keep doing it. And you know, we can't leave them to vacating so many homes. We have a whole lot of empty homes and people out on the streets. We have families, three and four in one apartment because of what? This needless, it's absolutely inhumane. We need to get those homes that are empty and vacant with people in them instead of how this thing system is. Lynn United for Change is one of the eight sites in Massachusetts that, that's doing this. And if, if people take away from this, I think that, that this question of underwater loans being the key link in the mortgage prices would be a really good thing to take away from this. Not only in terms of policy and conceptually, but in terms of how to organize these systems. Underwater loans are the place to organize the existence. And uh, because you can, you can really win, and, and it's, it's the key to all kinds of other things that are happening. So, in Washington State, what they do is they send the sheriff out to knock on your door and evict you. And then you're talking about the bank knocking on your door, obviously, $2,000. It's one thing. But when the sheriff comes and says, you gotta go, you, you, have to, you have to look into the laws in your state that govern foreclosures and evictions. I mean, in Massachusetts, there's not much protection against foreclosure, but there is more procedural protections against eviction. So we put a lot of energy into stopping the eviction after foreclosure. We don't put a lot of energy into stopping the foreclosure. In some ways, we, in some ways, you want to get rid of the bank anyway. But you've got situations where where people are getting loan modifications. You know, the, the big rap against loan modifications was that only five or ten percent of people were getting permanent loan mods. But if you look at the people who got the permanent loan mods. They're often things like you said, which is where they pay a, an, an affordable monthly rate, but they owe $500,000 at the end of 25 years. Right. That's, that's not an acceptable loan modification, even though it's, quote, successful. And if people think they have an alternative to that, 
They'll roll the dice and try to get their house back. Look, we guys, probably got to get ready for the march, but let's take a couple more comments and then we'll. You guys want to? When I first took off the march, principals are marching. Next thing I knew, it went to another board of I've been from here five more to town. Sell, they sell the service and so now, What are they doing to me? I mean, explain to me. It seems like each time I open my mail and I'm saying, oh, okay, American Home Markets now. My, my, my markets go up. I mean, that's what, what, what this guy said is so important. Fraudulent conveyances. They can sell your note. But they've got to without do it. me knowing. Yeah, without yeah. You knowing. You sign that in your note. Right. It specifically says that they can sell the servicing of your mortgage loan. It is in every person's. I'm a mortgage loan officer for a well, small see, bank in Las Vegas. But, but they may not do it legitimately. And they have to do it they legitimately, have to legitimately, and they don't because there's too many of them. Yeah. So Let's, so so what should I be doing? I mean, what questions should I be asking? Who should I be seeing or talking to? Or what? Excuse me. Let's try to end with that. Hang, I'll hold that thought of it. Let's try to end, end with that one. Um, what I will tell you is this. Is one of the things that we have discovered is that the reason why you probably heard about people would just get loan modification paperwork. You just get it and you wouldn't even call. The reason why is because our federal government, every time Bank of America, you would call and apply for a loan modification, they would go to the well with the government and they'd get a kickback from the government. So that's why you started getting packages in the mail because they were going to the well. Well, when would they start to force the, force the foreclosure? When the well got dry and they said, we paid out enough on this particular property. And then that's when they stopped giving the money. Now, the other thing that people have to rec recognize also is that as a loan officer, knowing the numbers, I can tell you this. Unless you've got a three, four hundred thousand dollar home, if you're anything over about forty, fifty thousand dollars upside down in just in a three or four hundred thousand dollar home, you, if you're, it's got to be in that price range and that dollar amount to even be worth keeping the house at a lower interest rate. If you're over $100,000 upside down, and even a house that's, that's $300,000, $400,000, you, it will take you over half the life of the loan to unbury, and that's if they give you like the 2% interest. I'm telling you right now, most of these people who've got a house that's worth $150,000 and they're $40,000, $50,000 upside down, it will take you nearly the life of the loan to unbury. So unless you're planning, and the average homeowner in this country stays in a home five to seven years. That's actually the national average. So if you think about it, you're probably never going to unbury from these houses. And people aren't realizing, and they're so emotionally tied to them, which I understand. And it's tough to get some people to cut that tie. They just do not want to do it. And they're going to keep a house that's a couple hundred and two in Las Vegas. I mean, I, I, honestly, my house is like five hundred thousand dollars upside down. This is a common number: one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand upside down. And, and this, these numbers are staggering, and people don't realize. It. So it's about education, also educating people that they need to know they've got to cut that emotional. T it's the toughest thing. But if you sit and logic them and show them the numbers based on this is how long it will take you to unbury. When they think about that it starts answering the question on why a loan modification is even worth it. Now, the other way you can go with loan modifications, though, is you start working that process to buy people more time in the home. As a loan officer, I have I am now in my 45th month in foreclosure. I have sucked out of Bank of America not making a house payment because I learned how to manipulate the system, and nice. I don't care. Bank of America can kiss my ass. Nice. I yeah. Sure. I have manipulated the system, but, the, the tie, but the it, tie took, it took some up. work. It took some work. The tie that people have to their homes. That's right. That can, can work against you if you're yes. signing a bad loan out of the case. Absolutely. It can work for us in terms of people defending their home and demanding Correct. principal reduction. Yes. The it's 32, a double-edged sword. The 32, the 32 eviction blockades. Mm -hmm. The 32 yes. eviction blockades that we've done, 30 of them have been for homeowners. Here we're a tenant organizing group. Eviction blockades were a venerable tactic of tenant organizing, but 30 of those 32 eviction blockades have been for owners because of this thing that you described. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they inflated the prices of homes. It was rigged from the very beginning. Had the system worked properly, the homes wouldn't be selling like hotcakes. All they cared about was making money. If they walked up to you and you agreed, you got a loan. People who didn't even want it, they were told, hey, you're paying that for rent. Come on in. Yeah. And that's what ended up trapping a lot of people. Yeah.
know, today what we need to do is not necessarily give up and say, don't be attached to your home. What we need to be is concerned. Do you really want to fight this? We'll join you. We are going to make this our country, not theirs. Absolutely. So, I do agree, but I, I do want to say that um, we do need to question the idea of property rights in this country and in the world. Um, if there is more than, if there's more abandoned buildings in New York than homeless people, uh, I don't know why somebody's not occupying those homes. So, uh, as far as the deadbeats and uh, like being attached to your house, we really need to start looking at um, this as a human right and. Whether you have a job, whether you can pay or not, you deserve a shelter over your head. Yeah. And if there's a banding bit on there, then I don't, I don't see um, why it's not being used. Point well taken. I think we gotta go give Vader a piece of our mind, but if we could end with this, uh, if we could end with this, every every meeting we use this chant, which you probably already heard here, but the person from the front of the room says, what do you do when the banks are deck? Stand, Stand up, up, fight back. back. What do you do when the banks are deck? Stand, Stand up, fight back. back. That's our information on there if you need it.